This video will cover the topic, Writing and Evaluating a Function Modeling Continuous Exponential Growth or Decay Given Doubling Time or Half-Life. Let's look at an example problem. Let t be the time in minutes since the beginning of the study, and let y be the amount of the substance at time t. Write a formula relating y to t. Let's look at the model of how we solve these problems. y equals y sub 0 times e to the power of r times t, where y is the final amount, y sub 0 is the initial amount, e is a constant, r is the rate of growth or decay, and t is the time. So our first step is to find a formula relating y to t. I have no idea how I'd begin to do this. That's okay. We need to substitute the values we have been given into the equation. So what is our initial amount? Would it be 6.9 milligrams? Yes, that's correct. That is our y sub 0 amount. Now e is just a constant, so we leave it as e. And next, we need to find r. We are given a doubling time of 19 minutes for this substance. That means the time it takes for y to equal 2 times y sub 0. So we can substitute these values into the equation to solve for r. This results in 2 times 6.9 equals 6.9 times e to the power of 19 times r. We can divide both sides of the equation by 6.9, and this gives us 2 equals e to the power of 19 times r. How can we solve for r now? We can take the natural logarithm of both sides of the equation. When we take the natural log of an exponential expression with base e, it simplifies to just the exponent. So in our example, we are left with natural log of 2 equals 19 times r. If we divide both sides by 19, we see that r equals natural log of 2 divided by 19. Now that we have found y sub 0 and r, we can substitute them into our equation, and that is the answer to part A. For part B, it asks how much will be present in 18 minutes. So for which variable do we substitute 18? 18 minutes is a time, so wouldn't we substitute it in for t? Yes, that's correct. We substitute 18 in the equation and solve for y. This results in 13.3 milligrams present after 18 minutes. And this makes sense because it is an exponential growth problem. Let's do one more example. Write a formula relating y to t. So what is our y sub 0? 761.5 milligrams, right? Yep, that's right. Now how do we solve for r? Well, it says the half-life is 5 hours, so our t is going to be 5. And since it's a half-life, wouldn't y equal 1 half times y sub 0? That's exactly right. Because this is an exponential decay problem, our y value after some time t is going to be less than our initial value. So substituting those values into our equation, we can solve for r. Simplifying this equation results in 1 half equals e to the power of 5 times r. We need to take the natural log of both sides of the equation again, don't we? Yeah. If we take the natural log of both sides, we'll be able to solve for r. Now we have natural log of 1 half equals 5r, which gives us the value for r of natural log of 1 half divided by 5. Using the r value we just found, we substitute that r value and the other values we found into the equation to solve for part a. For part b, it asks us to find how much is left after 4 hours, so we give t a value of 4 and solve for y. This results in our final answer of y equals 437.4 grams after 4 hours. Okay, I think I get it. First, we look at the equation y equals y sub 0 times e raised to the rt, and using the values we are given in the example, we write an equation relating y to t. Next, we take the values we've found and solve for a given t to find out how much substance is left after that amount of time. You got it! 